guys hope everyone is doing well in this video i'm going to be going over some updates for bitcoin ethereum total crypto market values chart one and three number of altcoins and then lastly the spx and gold but to go ahead and get it started here first off we see a six hour chart here for bitcoin in this image up here to the left we see zoomed in the triangle pattern that bitcoin has been in since first week of december of last year now as I've been saying in my most recent videos, I think best worst case scenario, Bitcoin retraces down to around approximately $30,000 in this range of this red ellipse, retesting this double top resistance we had seen throughout the first half of last year. Um, when it comes to this triangle pattern, the breakout range is looking somewhere from around 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th of January, just pushing towards the uh, halfway point of January, I think we'll likely see Bitcoin either break towards the upside here of this triangle or break towards the downside. Uh, like I said, to its lowest or as approximately 30,000, maybe seeing some mix down around 29, 28.5 thousand. Uh, I also think there's good reason to believe this range right here, approximately 35 to 36,000 could be met. And then above that, also just somewhere around like 37, 38.5 thousand. Um, ultimately, 40,000 would be where we saw the recent local low right here at the B point of this triangle. Ultimately, I'm still, personally, I'm leaning to seeing 40,000 held. Um, I don't think that a significant, more significant down uh, or pullback is absolutely necessary. It's definitely uh, possible, but I don't think it's necessary. And then also, even if we were to see, let's say if we drop down to around 30,000, it's a 30% move. One of the things I mentioned in one of my recent videos was the 20 to 40 percent rule going back in Bitcoin's history. And once the bull markets began, the retracements in the bull market were no more than 40 percent, uh, usually no more less than around 20 percent, which lines up with this upper range at around 36,000 all the way down to if it were to go to 40 percent, it would hit around 26.5 thousand. Although I'm not too personally inclined to believe that it's going to retest that low again, I think approximately 30,000 is. Um, the most significant pullback that it could see here at this point. Here on this daily chart, essentially the same thing. We see the same triangle, uh, the rising broadening wedge. These three, uh, these are three price targets of the macro falling wedge Bitcoin's been in since um, around 55, approximately $55,000 when it hit that price value in 2021. So far we have broken out of that. That's what this entire bear to bull transition has been in in this uh, at this point very evidently clear uh, evident and clear uptrend we've been in uh, you can see that this first price target around basically thirty eight thousand acted as once bitcoin saw the first spike back above thirty thousand in october of last year and then slowly built its way up to around thirty seven nine thirty eight thousand set here sideways Kept finding resistance, find it, then finally broke, and then instantly shot up basically to the second price target, somewhere just around 44, 43, um, $45,000. Ever since then, it's just been going sideways clearly. Um, so, so far, these, given these have acted out pretty, uh, pretty accurately, uh, there's a good reason to believe, I think, that if we see um, a break towards the upside, within the next month or two rather than a break towards the downside here that around 50 approximately 52,000 could be the next area where we see basically maybe we see something along these lines and bitcoin sits here for a little bit and then finally pushes back towards 60 to 65 69 thousand dollars sometime around uh, march april or so um this year Moving into this four-day chart, the last time, the first time that I went over this chart would have been around three to four months ago. It was towards around, eh, yeah, like last 
last week of September right here in this area. Um, now, for those of you familiar with the content, this blue turquoise path is the one that I have been projecting for many months at this point. Whenever the bull market finally began, Bitcoin set the final low at 15.4 thousand. I've been expecting something similar to how March of 2020 to April 2021 behaved. Now, at this point, just comparing how Bitcoin has looked so far to each of these patterns, uh, the blue one, I would say personally, is definitely falling through the most. Secondarily, the green one. Now, um, at this point, which I will elaborate on this in the next chart, it, I think things are running at most around three months behind, which if I bring this out to roughly when it would top out at around July of this year, given that this three month delay, I would say that this pattern starts to look a lot more like it, uh, where we could see this final spike up to around, like I said, $52,000 if Bitcoin doesn't see a drawdown over the next month or so. Um, so to move into this chart, this white pattern is if Bitcoin, it's an updated one, more towards around being a top, around 200, 250,000, sometime around June, July of this year, rather than closer to the halving, which would be this uh, red zone. Now, if Bitcoin sees this retracement, something like, like this black path, somewhere down to around 30 to $35,000 over the next roughly two months, then I still think um, Bitcoin would top out during uh, this year rather than 2025 again around 200 250,000 sometime around october november december more towards the last three months of this year rather than uh, at least first half which is what i'm still leaning to at this point um now when it comes to going back to this chart each of these patterns so basically at this point really the only viable one is going to be the i think at this point the uh this white one and this green one not the white one but the turquoise one and the green one um which would the way that i have it on here top out some time around december of 2025 just in general i still think 200 250 000 is the max for the upcoming bull market whether or not it tops out next year or 2025 um but moving back into this chart Look down here at this would be what Bitcoin looked like from July of 2019 to August of 2021. If you take the time measurement tool from July 2019 to the beginning of October 2020, 66 bars. If you do the same thing beginning July of 2022 to October, you get 66 bars as well. Um, which those of you familiar with my content would know how this factors into my phase cycle theory and the overall um, structure of Bitcoin's price over its entire history within the phases and the cycles that create an epic in Bitcoin's price structure. Um, let's see again. So would be why we most recently locally bottomed out around halfway into September at approximately 26,000, which is what happened back in 2020 before Bitcoin began the most recent of the prior bull market um, being the overall uh, the bull market of the what would be in for right now phase one of cycle three for bitcoins um, cycle history and we can even see here with this inside pitchfork pattern uh, drawn from each of these three pivot points right here that there's overall been a pretty rough range throughout this entire cycle as well beginning uh, back at approximately twenty thousand dollars in December twenty seventeen, um, this seven eight six has clearly been important. Not only does this validate the two hundred two hundred fifty thousand dollar range, um, the main thing being what I've gone over plenty of times on this channel would be the cycle retracement for the bear market of phase one, or uh, down to the first bottom of this W pattern that we see right here, leading into sixty four thousand. This lines up with the 2.321, which in the prior cycle to, so cycle two for Bitcoin, uh, this is the exact same thing that happened in the bull market for phase one back then. Um, if we take a look down here at the RSI, we can see that it just recently, going back to basically the beginning of November, we saw the RSI cross back above the 786. So just to entertain here, there's definitely still a possibility that we see something Maybe we're reaching a, a mid bull market local top 
and we kind of staggered down here uh, maybe even into around halfway in the next year and we see a bull market lead into 2025 contrary to what i think is most likely it's definitely possible um, but it could also be something similar to again september october november of 2020 as in what we've done most recently where we had that local bottom and we see this pretty quick leap up towards the upside here very similar to uh, 2020 as it is to now so for this one month chart we can see each of these bull market top to bear market bottom fib retracements going all the way back to 2012 to 786 once bitcoin closes above that then it was the final line for the bull market to actually be in full effect and given that the new year has started we see this first monthly january candle it is printing a turquoise vector candle which we can see right here is what it did when it crossed the prior 786 for this 786 the same thing and for this first 786 it also did the same thing so i'm i think at least by now this depends whether or not we see Bitcoin get a drawdown, something on these lower time frame charts that I pointed out. If we get that, then I think that we could possibly see Bitcoin close above the 786 more towards around maybe April, May, early June. But um, right now I'm leaning to not seeing a drawdown to at least 32, 30,000. Maybe if we see something quick down to around like 37 or 36. Um, which would still, I think, allow for Bitcoin to, by at least the end of February, get a candle close above the 786, which is sitting at basically approximately 50,000. But I think definitely by around first week, second week of March, that um, Bitcoin will about 70, 60, 70 percent uh, chance of likelihood closed above the 786 and continue to. Uh, validate this trend that has lasted for quite a period of time. If we look here at the RSI, we can also see this moved above the interpolase to 618, which going back to December 2016 right here. It's when it crossed above the 786. November 2020, the same thing, 786 cross. And the difference here is, is that the RSI has gone above the 618, but it has not crossed the 786 yet, which again is one of the reasons why I'm led to believe that sometime by around into February, early March, that Bitcoin will close above that 786. Um, on top of that, if we look at the RVI here, this indicator sitting around values 60 or 77 rather, this finally went off today, which you can see in each of these black circles again, is just further pointing all really all to the same thing. The, the RSI, this RVI and the 786 are all pointing to the same thing, going all the way back to 2012. Um, and then on top of that, the MACD continues to be looking strong here, uh, showing really no signs of uh, momentum dying down yet. We move into this last Bitcoin chart here, the 12 month chart, the yearly chart we can see given the new year has started. So we are seeing our candle here now. Each of these vertical dashed lines or the yellow dots, this is the halving year. So we have 2012. 2016, 2020, and currently 2024. And what I find interesting about each of these, so we have yellow years, um, uh, green years, blue years, and red years, and then that cycle repeats four years, four colors, and the trend begins really with the very first halving, um, going all the way back to 2009 into 2011 when Bitcoin hit approximately $33, $32. That would be the entire first cycle um, of Bitcoin. And then the second cycle began again when the first cycle ended in 2011. And then this one ended with approximately 20,000 in January, 2017. And then from here to our current time, we are about to head into the final bullish impulse of phase one of cycle three. So if we go back to each of these dots, we can see here, beginning with the first tabling, we have yellow dot, a yellow year and then we have a green year massive candle then we have a blue year basically the beginning of the bear market sideways action downside action we have the red year which typically for the most part well the first two red years are red candles the third one wasn't but 
what characterizes um, so going back to the yellow, what characterizes the yellow years typically are kind of these not super thin bodies, but kind of I'll just say moderate. And then the green years have these massive candles. You can see um, outside of you could say these two right here, but they are still larger than the average candles. With the red being the small bodied candles with um, drastic upside and downside wicks to show that the trend was changing over the next year or two. Uh, leading into the yellow year and then the green year. And then we have again blue year, bear markets beginning, volumes dying down, red year, bear market bottoms already been set in, the markets going sideways and thinning out as the candle showing, showing a trend change. And then again have the repeating of bull market, yellow, the green, and then see blue and red again. And now we're on the fourth halving, which is synonymous with the yellow years, the beginning of a bull market now. Again, for most of you familiar with my content, I do. I'm still leaning to seeing the all-time high 2024 this year, which could go as high um, as I've been saying is 250,000. Now, if you look at the trend lines that I have drawn on this monthly chart, these monthly candles, it only goes as high as 186,000, lower bound being 112,000. Although I don't think this is something that's uh, very major. I think this, this candle can definitely overextend above this as a resistance. I don't think that needs to act as the uh and like a very precise resistance for this yearly candle um although what i do find interesting is if you go to two, uh, 2025 here you can see that the upper bound is 245,000 and the lower bound is 150,000 which lines up with the range that i've been giving a lot recently 180,000 as lower bound and 250,000 as a higher bound for the upcoming bull market um range uh, that it sets its highs in um which could bring a little bit more confirmation to seeing it top out 2025 rather than 2024 doing my current phase cycle theory in the context that it provides um and also if we do top out the bull market sets uh, its high in this year 2024 then that would mean that the next uh the next dot or the next year wouldn't be a green year rather it would um would be a blue year because this would be a bull market high candle and the next one would have to be um, a bull market high candle being synonymous with which you can see each of these green candles so we would skip the green candle basically you could say this yellow candle would be you could say it was a mixture of both yellow and green 2024 would be a yellow and green year if you want to think about it that way and then 2025 would be a blue year which would break the trend so perhaps my current bias is wrong in 2025 will be the green year and it will stay as it has each and every single time going back to 2013 basically the beginning of the second overall cycle in bitcoin's history moving into ethereum here i'm really there's not really too much to say for ethereum that i haven't already said for bitcoin they really are painting the same picture we've seen this impulse above this ascending this triangle here this bullish pattern now i definitely think it's possible especially if bitcoin gets a draw down for ethereum to come down to approximately 1850 as low as maybe around 1780 um although i definitely think it's possible that it could just continue to rise here up to this green range as i mentioned recently around 3.82 5.2 and then at highest um somewhere around 25,000 to 40 45,000 at highest again either next year or either this year or next year 2024 2025 moving in here to the total crypto market chat uh market value chart uh, so if i just quickly go this right here is going to be the total market three chart which excludes everything excludes bitcoin and ethereum you can see they basically look they look almost identical. We can see here this 618 resistance right here. Also, something similar I pointed out on the earlier Bitcoin chart. We see whenever Bitcoin closes above this, the more market then began shortly after that. So we could see the market value for the crypto uh, the crypto market continue to push a little bit higher here, close above this, and then get this kind of sideways action right here that we see and then lead into a parabolic move to around 10 to 16 trillion. Um, if we look here, look at the total three chart. Again, it's basically the same thing. We could move a little bit higher here, but then kind of just basically go sideways. 
and then heading into I had to adjust this the last time around I forgot to um, subtract Ethereum's mark upcoming market value from the uh, price range that I gave for the total three chart last time around and I was saying six to twelve trillion uh, and when I take away Ethereum it gives a new range of approximately three to nine trillion um, so a pretty substantial drop but I just I completely forgot to do that so uh, everything but Bitcoin and Ethereum I think could at max reach around nine trillion at lowest around three trillion sometime again like either this year or next year um if you look here heading into the altcoins for trias this call altcoin has been performing it's got to be at least in the top 10 top 20 so far um, ever since bitcoin bottomed out around october december um, of 2022 and it has begun this uh, uptrend that it has been in and ever since then trias has been just steadily growing up at this point it's up two thousand percent again like i was saying that's got to be this has got to be one of the top 10 or 20 at least altcoins that has moved this much so far uh, even though things really haven't especially i mean even looking at bitcoin it's only about recovered half of the prior bear market whereas trias is almost retesting the all-time highs here around 22 to 32 dollars currently its highest wick is around 17 and $17.35. Um, I was mentioning this orange range last time around that we could come up, try to come up into this range and find some resistance. Obviously, it's overshot that by a pretty decent bit at this point. Now, if you look down here at the RSI, it's, it's really oversold. It's more oversold than it was going all the way back to the all time high, which the reason to think that we could see a cool down here, come back down to this orange range, also just the upper portion of this black vector control zone, maybe sit here for a period of time and then continue to go even higher um, again i don't really know where i uh, i don't have really a good way to deduce a uh, new all-time high for this chart given that it doesn't have enough data for me to do that according to my phase cycle theory um, and comparing it to bitcoin um, but i mean at this point this could end up being because it has already behaved so well i think there's there's two two routes I could see. Either it's going to be one of the better performers in the upcoming bull market, which would, I mean, in my opinion, be at least like a 10,000, 15,000 percent move. But I mean, it could definitely be a good 30 to 50,000 percent move. Um, or it could continue to be one of those altcoins that is maybe it's just it's getting our early head start. It's it's seeing a lot of momentum. Um, and velocity early on in the bull market and it's going to just maybe range sideways it'll be one of those altcoins xrp looks kind of similar to that which i'll get to here in a moment maybe it'll just kind of range sideways over the next few years in this range or maybe it will just um just barely even make a new all-time high here and then come back down and just roughly continue in a relatively sideways range um, again it would look something similar to xrp uh, xrp basically it didn't even set a new all-time high last time around in 2021 as opposed to 2018 2017 um, xrp has been in lawsuits with the sec for the last few last couple of years so, i mean that could have also been definitely a reason for suppressing the price um, which i've said in the past that this could all end up culminating the fact that xrp didn't make a new all-time high maybe it's going to end up um, uh, compromising with all of that uh, and not just coming basically back up to the prior all-time high it's a little bit higher somewhere around three to five dollars is what i've been saying recently maybe because of this uh this underperformance that xrp has been seeing maybe it comes up and it just has a really really strong bull market for whatever reason it makes up for all of this bullishness that it hasn't seen due to the the xrp lawsuits and just bad news and other things surrounding it just suppressing the price and maybe because of the fact that it won it's it had a good there was a good uh, conclusion for xrp when it comes to all these lawsuits that it had been under perhaps now it's going to be time for xrp and i know a lot of people like xrp uh so i mean i think there's definitely the, definitely a, a good reason to think there's a strong stronger impetus behind xrp going up than just 35 dollars in the upcoming bull market 
If you look here at the RSI, you can see that's basically just been oscillating around the median line in the middle range. Um, whenever this finally starts to push back up to this upper range right here, then we could expect our XRP to start breaking the 92 cent to around a $1.20 cent range, which is going to be this upper resistance. It's going to be most important to look out for. Other than that, around 78 cents to a dollar are price indicators that I have here on this chart. Um, so moving into SIA coin, now XRP and SIA coin, they go back and forth between each of these charts, look nearly identical. X, or, uh, SIA coin here also did the same thing XRP did, didn't set a new all time high last time around. So basically everything that has got done saying for XRP, roughly apply to SIA coin here, maybe it will just do, uh, it's upcoming board is not gonna be uh, too strong and only reach around eight to 20 cents. Or maybe, like I was saying, it's going to make up for its lack of bullishness over the last few years, and it will have a very uh, just strong bore on even higher up into the dollar range. Moving uh, instead of around three to ten thousand percent, which that's still good. That's that's it's towards the lower end of things when you look at a lot of altcoins, but it's still good. Um, I mean, moving up to $5 would be a 224,000% move. Um, the only coin that I've seen move something uh, in the hundreds of thousands of percent outside of like Sheeb and some meme coins because they're so cheap would have been Phantom. Um, but due to various things that I've, according to my face cycle theory that I mentioned in past videos, I'm less inclined to believe we'll see uh, altcoins go that high this time around, pushing above the hundred thousands percent points range um unless it's like a meme coin that's insanely cheap or something one of those kind of just very uh those projects that have a uh or outliers um outside of that if you look here at bsv this is associated with bitcoin cash um it, it looks definitely I don't know if it's the worst coin that I've ever seen, but it looks it's definitely in the group of the worst coins. The um, going all the way back to 2019, heading into this most recent bull market top, you can see that this coin broke the prior absolute lows, going lower and setting an overall, as you can see, a downtrend here. I don't think this definitely would be something I would want to put my money in personally if I was come across this chart with the intention of investing into it. Um, according to my phase cycle theory, this yellow range right here is going to be where it would top out at. Um, so it's already kind of pushed up into most of this range. Um, now it could definitely completely, you know, go higher. I think it, at highest could probably go somewhere up here uh, in this range, correlating with this prior price action to find some resistance. Although, I mean, uh, my phase cycle theory, uh, the, the, the the data and the uh, the price harmonics that I use to project out for altcoins comparing them to Bitcoin could very well be wrong uh, at the end of the day. So it's definitely possible. I mean, the BSV could even go um, back above the the all time high at approximately five hundred dollars. But for right now, I don't. The fact that it set this new low as opposed to it did twenty nineteen, and I just even something like Sia coin didn't do that. XRP didn't even do that. And th these coins, in my personal opinion, just don't look that good chart wise. Uh, so I don't, I just don't feel like this one's gonna personally, I don't think it has any good reason to set a new all time high heading into the next bull market. Here for Elon, uh, one of the meme coins, let's see, it's been just in a downtrend here. It's just breaking that a little bit. Uh, it also it has recently printed a yellow vector candle. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, this yellow increasing volume vector candle is in the lows. So I'd say that overall this is a good thing, but it is also, if I were to zoom in here a little bit, you can see that more locally speaking, this is also in the highs in the local, the more micro view of things. So it definitely could continue to come down a little bit lower here. Um, maybe down, just kind of retest this rough area right here bunch of zeros. I'm not going to attempt to calculate that right now, but overall, I don't, I do think the, these meme coins will go up heading into the next bull market. Just a matter of how much they're going to go up. Um, given that this one is, has some sort of association with Dogecoin, I think that's generally a good thing to see. Um, 
when it comes to moving continuously strength above this descending bear market channel it's been and moving above this 50 SA minute moving average is going to be one of the important things to see. You can see that it did that back here in February of last year, but it didn't have enough strength to continue to go higher here. Um, when it comes to price projections, not enough data for me to give a, a specific range, but last time around in the prior bull market, Dogecoin, I would say the top mean point, it was worth approximately 80 billion when it hit, I think it was around 75 cents. Um, so if this coin were to hit approximately up here at the highest 100 billion, that would put it at 0 0.0001. Um, basically chopping off right now, there's one, two, three, four, five, six zeros that would chop off three zeros on the price. Uh, in terms of the percent move, it would be a 84,000, 85,000 percent move. Um, and then down the line, we have approximately 30, 30 billion market value, approximately 9.4 billion, approximately 4.5 billion overall. Even if it were to go to this lowest one, if it, let's just say it retests the uh, prior all time high, that's a 2000% move. That's, that's in the, the lowest bracket of gains when you look at altcoins. The lowest one being 7000%, and the second one right here being 15000% when you start to enter. The higher gains territory, anything above fifteen thousand percent, that is typically what I I personally consider to be in the higher gaining territory. When you look at a bunch of altcoins and just comparing prior bull markets and seeing where the average uh, altcoin bull market sits in terms of percentage gains. Now let's say it continues to go down here. Um, I don't think at this point. Now this is a mean point. I think it's definitely possible it sets a new low. But at this point, if you're investing into this, I would assume you probably have some understanding and acceptance of the fact that it could just crash on you. But at the end of the day, these are high risk, but very high reward because they're so cheap and with a little, uh, just a small investment, you can make a lot of money. So there's, there's, uh, there's some pretty good impetus at the end of the day to invest into something like this. So for the last coin, another meme coin, there's actually, to my surprise, a number of coins, but this is, Jesus coin. This is just one of them that I was uh, that I'd, I'd seen when looking at these. But we can see here an ascending broadening wedge pattern. I think it's definitely possible. It's looking pretty bearish over the last week, last number of days. Now we've seen a pretty major wick down here below the structure, this uptrend structure. Now I think it's definitely possible it could come down into one of these bubbles right here overall from where it sits currently. Could drop another 80 percent so that is something to look out for actually we go back here to elon if it were to come back down and retest the prior low that's 38 40 percent it already retest the median of the downtrend it's around 53 percent um so that's something definitely something to, to think about if you're trying to within the next week or so next month invest into some of these meme coins again so think about what i was pointing out here for bitcoin and the other major coins and how they could, like here in Ethereum, they could see a, a drawdown over the next month or two that would likely cause these meme coins to see a pretty significant drawdown uh, if I had to uh, make some form of educated guess there. So when it comes to the all-time high again, it's at approximately $80 billion market value again because that is what Dogecoin went up to uh, last time around. I don't have enough data here on the chart to give some sort of specific projection. Um, but these are some price targets to possibly think about. If Dogecoin, I would I would definitely say this coin is probably not as popular. It hasn't been out as long. It's definitely not as popular as Dogecoin. So I think eighty billion, approximately eighty, 80 billion dollar market value would be a reasonable high here. It's so far from the lowest low to the highest high. It's up two hundred ninety five thousand percent. If from this most recent low right here, September of last year, if we were to do that same thing. Moving approximately 300,000%, that would, from where it currently sits, having one, two, three, four, five, six zeros, it would chop off two zeros. Um, let's, I mean, if it were to do that again, uh, given where it currently sits, that would only be roughly around a 23,000% move. So 
that would definitely be one of the better movers overall speaking. Um, but still, again, it's uh, very, very high uh, risk, but also very high reward. Again, like I said, I mean, I think it's definitely possible that it could move an average of around 64 point, or 64% more towards the downside over the next month or two. So moving into the SPX here in gold, um, really there's not too much to update here. They are basically looking the same, uh, still uh, having the same projection that I've been going over last time around where we're breaking this descending structure here on the SPX. Look here at gold, it's testing its horizontal structure. We see on here on both of these RSIs, we see this descending structure. Again, we see it for gold. It's been slowly moving up to the RSI resistance. As we see the SPX is strongly broken resistance here. Gold's just still getting shot down at the three year horizontal resistance. The MACD is getting close to its resistance. Again, really I think all of this is showing that the price is overextending itself and it really doesn't have much strength, much more strength left in it to, uh, to continue an uptrend. So I think we will again see it over the next one. And over the next two to four months, we'll see the SPX or gold push maybe a little bit higher here, um, but then also I think it will get rejected and enter a significant downtrend over the next year or two as Bitcoin heads into the next bull market, whether it tops out sometime this year, 2024, or in 2025. Um, but outside of that, that was all that I wanted to go over in this video. So again, hopefully enjoyed. Um, None of this is meant to be financial advice. Uh, really, it's meant to be educational, uh, perhaps for you to take something away from this uh, as an insight in order to further yourself and your understanding of the market and trading in general. Um, but all of that being said, I hope you all have a blessed day. Ooh, I, ooh, I